Hi, today I'll be trying to cut the liquid loader like the one you see right there and I probably won't be able to get the feel of the animation right. I don't really have an artistic sense, I'm a tech, but I'm going to show you some CSS tricks that can help us get this sort of effect. So yeah, let's get started. We already have our load element and we're going to maximize the CSS panel because we won't be writing anything but CSS. We're going to start with an outer radius, I don't know, let's say something like 7.5 ms. Okay, and then on our load element, we're going to set the padding to that radius and we're going to set the background so we can see stuff on the screen. Now we're going to round and everything, so border radius 50%, okay? But we want a circle, not an ellipse. So on the body, we're going to set something like display grid, okay? And here we're going to set place self center. Okay, now let's get back here and let's look what do we see right here so what i see is basically two overlapping rings with dash borders and um, one has a single dash that's basically half the ring and the other one has a bunch of smaller dashes now we don't get the sort of control with border style so our solution is to use a conic gradient and then a mask that masks out the inner part okay so we said we want two rings now we're going to use the two pseudo elements of our load element so we're going to set there on the body and on the div display grid and we're going to take all this stuff and we're going to put it before and uh, after so something like that and of course nothing's going to show up unless we set content Okay, now, as I said, we're going to use a repeating conic gradient. So, yeah, we don't have autocomplete for conic, so um, we did that. Now, let's say that we're going to have a number of repetitions for the one that has multiple little dashes. Let's say it's going to be something like six. Okay, so let's say that we're going to have, let's say, black, from 0% to 50% over uh, N, and then we're going to have transparent from 0% to 100% over N. Let's see that. Okay, it's starting to look like something. But as I said, for one, we want to have a single dash that uh, spans half the ring. So we're going to introduce something like uh, a switch custom property and um, I wrote an entire article on that and I'm going to be linking it in the description so you can go check it out if you need more clarification on this basically I'm going to set this custom property to zero here and on the after I'm going to switch it to one so here I becomes one okay so everything we multiply with I is going to be zero for the before and uh, its own value for the after. Now, what we want to set here is basically a denominator, so the number of parts that we split, the number of repetitions for our conic gradient, basically. So our denominator is going to be calc, and here we're going to have one plus, and here we're going to have uh, n minus one, because we need to add back that one from there. We can't divide by zero. So that's the whole deal. Now, if i is zero, then this whole thing, this uh, second part that's multiplied with i becomes zero. So this denominator is just one, so we divide by one. And if i is one, then this denominator becomes n, okay? so here we're going to actually divide by that denominator so so we're going to start like this and we're going to put everything inside a calc so now you can kind of see how it works so that's a half and that has those smaller slices now let's take care of that mask so uh, we're going to use some yeah I can't type uh, we're going to use a radial gradient 
so radial gradient and this one let's say that we're going to have that uh, ring width so it's basically like a border width or whatever uh, let's say it's going to be something like 2 m's and this one is going to be closest side we don't even have autocomplete for that and it's going to be transparent up to calc 100% minus that border width and then we're going to have something like that Oh, yeah, of course. So it's starting to look like something. I don't really like that jagged edge there. So um, let's fix that. Let's say we can do... plus one pixel. And let's say we go up to 100% minus one pixel and then we have again transparent okay now it looks a lot smoother and I think we can increase this a tiny little bit okay now the thing is we want those two to overlap and that means we want them in the same cell so let's place them in the same cell and we're going to set here grid area first row, first column. So they're in the cell at the intersection between the first row and first column. Now, having done this, we're going to create an animation, so a rotation animation. Keyframes, rotate, and here we're going to go to transform, rotate. So here, Oops. Yeah, I keep messing things up worse and worse. Uh, we're going to have one turn and we want them to rotate in opposite directions. So if you see here, these go this direction, but this one seems to be going in the opposite direction. So these go clockwise, but the big one goes the other way. Okay, so we're going to uh, compute a sign. So two times i minus one. Okay, and here we're going to have a calc. Okay, um, let's also set an animation duration. We can tweak this later. And let's set an animation there. So rotate that animation duration. Infinite, let's see it. And let's say it's going to be ease and out. Okay, it's starting to look like something, but it's not quite it. So what we're going to be doing is um, we are going to divide by the denominator. And here we're going to need to wrap this in a calc. Okay, and we only want to rotate this big one in steps. Okay, uh, so every time another one has reached there, it rotates. So each time another segment has reached there to touch it, we rotate to cover it. Okay, so let's do that. That means setting a different animation timing function. So for the before, which is uh, the big one, we're going to have animation timing function. It's going to be a steps function. Steps twice n start. Let's see it now. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, we need a bit of offset because they start from the same point and yeah. So, um, from, and we're going to use a calc right here. Let's see it. Okay, it works now. That's good. I, I think we can just set this um, on the after and it just works just fine. Yeah. Okay, so that's the basic of it. Now, if we want something gooey, we can set a filter right here. So first off, we need to set a background white. Okay, and filter, blur. Um, let's, so we're going to have a numeric value, let's say nine, and we're going to have, no, nah. well, let's just, uh, so we're going to have that numeric value times one pixel and contrast three times that numeric value. Let's see it. Okay, uh, the thing is, yeah, it's getting too close to the edge there. So let's fix that. The thing is, uh, the body and the load element, they both take uh, the height of those uh, before pseudo elements, so we don't have any sort of uh, spacing around them. Um, of course, we can use something like a margin. So margin radius, something like that. Then it's just going to be a lot better. But, yeah, not really that border width would be more fitting. Right? And of course you can have a different number of segments there. It's going to work the same. Okay, uh, let's uh, get back here to setting the height to the full viewport height. Okay, now here we're going to set a margin zero to get rid of that scroll bar. Okay, and uh, let's make this uh, colorful. Now let's say we could, uh, for example, increase this. Or we can have something like 12, for example. You know, to make for a nice rounding there. Okay, that looks better. Okay, now let's uh, take care of uh, coloring stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that uh, thing out of there and um, on all div elements and on all pseudo elements. So we're going to set it right there. Okay, and we're going to get it out of there. Yeah, if I know how to click and select. And here, of course, we're going to have pseudo elements before and after. Uh, we're going to set a background light thing, something like that. Uh, content, because otherwise nothing's going to show up. Right, and then on the after pseudo element, of course here we're going to need mix blend mode. Um, darken so that the background shows up. Okay, so you see we have that yellowish background coming through. And here we're going to set a padding to that uh, radius. Right, and we're going to set the background, let's say it's going to be a linear gradient and it's going to use that list of colors. Okay, uh, let's place self center. Okay, 
and now we're going to set here mix blend mode lighten okay now that looks much better uh, one thing we have a bit of jagged edges there so let's also set blur one pixel right here so um, yeah and let's say we have this at an angle something like that and we can also tweak the timing function right here so we want something symmetric so uh, so 1 minus 0 is obviously 1 uh, 1 minus 0.15 is 0.85 so this is how we know we have something symmetric okay so yeah I'm going to leave it here I'm not going to tweak it any further I think I'm just going to decrease uh, the animation duration because uh, it looks a bit slow I don't know two seconds is it too fast I don't know you can toy with it maybe you can get uh, a better effect 2.5 perhaps anyway I am NOT going to tweak it anymore I'm just going to stop here I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future please consider supporting it you can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on patreon the link is going to be in the description or you can get me something off my Amazon wishlist. Again, the links are going to be in the description. Or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time. Bye!